Together we talked about the origin of the authority. How we got the authority, how we lost the authority, how we gave the authority to Lucifer. He had it for 4,000 years, how Jesus gave it back. Um, I'm going to do something a little interesting for a moment. When, Lu when Adam gave away his authority to Lucifer, he gave, get, essentially gave away his birthright. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You need a whole new birthright. When you study this thing, it's quite phenomenal. How many of you, I'm going I'm to go down a rabbit roll trip real quick. How many were in church last Sunday when Pastor Joel talked about Barabbas? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Why Barabbas? Why did God use Barabbas? In, in order to understand that, You've got to go all the way back to this time right here when Adam gave away his birthright, gave away his authority. Okay? When Adam gave away his authority to Lucifer, this happened. This happened. When you study Scripture, you will see that in the Bible, the right hand has always been the hand of blessing. Okay? When you study scripture, you will see that the right hand is the stronger hand and the left hand is the weaker hand. In the scriptures, you'll find out that the right hand always represented the nation of Israel, the left hand represented the rest of the world. The right hand of blessing, the left hand lesser. So, with that in mind, in order to understand Barabbas, we move forward in scripture to a guy by the name of Cain. Cain slew his brother Abel. He lost his birthright, right? And his birthright, his blessing, went to his youngest brother, Seth. And this happened. This happened. Okay? We move forward in Scripture to another, another set of brothers named Esau and Jacob. Esau gave away his birthright to his younger brother Jacob, mm -hmm. right? And this happened. This happened. Okay? We go to another gentleman in Scripture, we go further in the Bible, and you have a guy by the name of Joseph. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. When Joseph's father, Israel, was to bless his boys, he took the boy, he took his hands and did this. And Joseph was no father and corrected him. And, jo and uh, 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 Israel correct, scolded Joseph and said, No, this way. This way. When you study this in Scripture, it's quite phenomenal. It goes deeper than what we're going to talk about, but I'm going to tell you why God used Barabbas. Because this happened. For the sake of time, we're going to move to where Jesus got, got uh, uh, in, his, in his trial. So, okay. Question is, who was Barabbas? You have Mark 15, 7, right? Mm -hmm. Who was Barabbas? Mark 15, 7. And there was one named Barabbas who was chained with his fellow rebels, he had committed murder in the rebellion. Okay, right. Barabbas was a was a murderer, but he was part of a, a, a freedom fighting group, a revised portion of the Maccabean revolt. So he didn't like 
kill puppies and tear the wings off of butterflies. He killed Roman soldiers. He was against Roman-occupied Jerusalem. So he was kind of like a modern-day Robin Hood to a lot of the people. So who has the next scripture? Which would be Matthew 27. We're, we're figuring out who Brabus is. Now, it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. Okay, Acts 16. So at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Okay, now, the thing is, is Pilate knew, at a time of, he knew enough about Hebrew people, that at a per particular time of a certain feast, what feast was it? It was a certain feast, it was customary to release a prisoner. Mm -hmm. And they chose, they, and, and they had someone that people liked, Barabbas. Now we have John 18.39. To release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Ooh, it was Passover. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was crucified on Passover, therefore fulfilling the feast of Passover. Okay? Keep going. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Jesus Give us Barabbas. Okay. Barabbas had taken part in the rebellion. Yes. So Barabbas was a was a guy who was part of a revolt against Romans, and he killed Roman soldiers. He was like a modern-day uh, Robin Hood. So here's what you have. You have Jesus standing at the, at the, uh, in front of everybody, right? And Jesus is known as the son of the Father's right hand. Barabbas was his Greek name. If you know me, I like to study names. His Hebrew name was Yeshua Barabba. That's what's his name. His name was Jesus. So you had Jesus, the son of the Father's right hand. You had Yeshua Bar Rabba. Bar means son, Abba. So you had Jesus, our Messiah, and Jesus, the son of the Father. And you know exactly what happened. The blessings of Jesus went on the lesser. And, th and this happened. And then we move forward in Scripture to the end of the book of Acts where the Jews will no longer hear. And they will no longer see. And the blessings of the nation of Israel went on what? The Gentiles. Us. And this happened. Why did God use Barabbas? To fulfill everything that happened back in the garden when Adam gave away his birthright. It's crazy. It goes deeper than that. <laughs> Way deeper. Than that. We're just skimming the surface. But when you study this, it's incredible. Guys, God's got this thing figured out. It's Man. all figured out. Praise God. Yeah, anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you because Pastor um, Joel was talking about Barabbas, and, and, you know, and, and he was like, uh, yeah. So, anyway, this is, so here's what we're talking about this week. We are in heaven, and. Uh, and we are talking about our authority, and we are talking about the Holy Spirit. We have seen how, last time we got together, how the devil will try to keep us in um, ignorance. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to know the name that's above every name. He, all, there's so many things he doesn't want you to know about Yeshua and what has happened on the crucifixion. And unfortunately, we have so many people in church who just don't know. And it's sad they don't know, and they don't know that they don't know. And, you know, we serve a Hebrew God, right? Okay? Yeah, it's, it's important. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the customs tonight, a little bit as we understand some scriptures. But anyway, we're going to talk about, uh, today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus, He left, and He, and we're going to talk about that, He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us it. It's interesting. God came, Jesus well, God came to the planet giving gifts. He gave us salvation, and He gave us the gift of the Holy, Holy Spirit. He brought heaven to earth. God gave, came to here to give us amazing things. So anyway, um, so here we have Jesus on the cross, and I mean Jesus on the throne. And actually, I put Him up there above the head because right now Jesus is the head of the church, and we are His body and so forth. And we have some angels and everything. Um, we have the the menorah. There is a menorah in heaven, okay? We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, right? So, we have temple furniture in heaven. 
The same furniture that was down on the tabernacle was really just a picture of what was in heaven. Mm -hmm. the, the, the furniture. So there is a Ark of the Covenant in heaven. There's a mercy seat in heaven. Everything that was down on the earth was nothing but a picture. It was already in heaven. Um, and then we have the, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, and then we have New Jerusalem. So just some overview a little bit of... Um, of um, Heaven. And we're going to get more into that as we go. So we, you should have your page number one. And we are going to talk about, his name is Ruha. Ruha. Ah. Kodesh. Yes, means Holy Spirit. That is, God's name is what? Yahweh. Jesus' name is? Yeshua, right? Holy Spirit's name is Ruha Ha Kodesh. Jump in here anytime you want, because I know there's a lot to going on tonight. So anyway, page number one. I'm going to read the. Or if someone wants to read the first one, page number one is Ruha, the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's amazing. Well, it's amazing. Well, go ahead. Read that. <laughs> okay. Okay. There is no subject in religion that is more controversial than that of the Holy Spirit. Oh my word. <laughs> There is no subject in the in religion that is more controversial. I came from a ministry that he was an it and not a person. And he was limited because God limited him. And there it's so controversial for who he is, what he is, what his ministry is, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I mean, you guys, if you believe that Jesus is in your heart, or you claim to be a Christian, you've got to know who's living inside you. Yeah. And, and we don't teach this stuff. We don't teach this stuff. Anyway, keep going. Unless properly understood, a large portion of the Bible, especially the New Testament, will remain a mystery. Because of this misunderstanding, there is much confusion and superstition in the minds of many people about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The value of this study concerning the Holy Spirit is to understand His part in our authority as a believer. Yes. Yes. God, you want? Okay. Yeah. God, God walked the earth as man in a mortal body filled with the authority and power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, okay. Nate, find me Luke, uh, Luke 4, 1. Oh. What? Go for it. As he's found in Luke 4 1. The Holy Spirit will have me dissect different parts of like the Word of God. Like I'll say, Well, you want me to study? And he tells me the chapter, you know, start looking up what stuff means in the Greek or the Hebrew. And Luke chapter 4, which is the same as what was just read in John, when Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit in Greek, that's pleres. This is what it means to be full of the Holy Spirit. And, and full of the Holy Spirit is pneumatos hagio pleres. To be full of, lacking nothing, perfect, abounding, covered, mature, covered in every part of the soul, thoroughly permeated with. So if you start looking in the New Testament and reading about Jesus, it said, being full of the Holy Spirit, and full of the Holy Spirit, and pleres, full of the Holy Spirit, down to every part of his soul. Jesus was sinless. He had no soul wounds caused by sin for the enemy to come and attack him. But yet, even he had to be full, covered, mature, saturated in every part of his soul with the Holy Spirit. So, when Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus... Okay, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. Go. <laughs> then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He attempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, the day it ended. That's good. He was hungry. That's good. So, first of all, Jesus was led by the Spirit, and he was totally full saturated. First he was full, then he was led. And the Holy Spirit knew good and well that at the end of that 40-day fast, he was going to be doing battle in the demonic realm where he was going to come face-to-face -face with Satan himself. 
And so this is a nugget which we'll be talking about more when we're talking about warfare. But Jesus did nothing unless the Father told him to through the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say anything. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't do anything. And we live in a world where there's evil all around us. We could be doing battles all day long, everywhere, for everybody. But Jesus only did what the Spirit led him to do, and he was full. He was covered in his soul, armor of God on. Because God's not going to send you to battle with all these wounds and holes in your armor so that you can get hit and then go back and take two months to recover. That's not how, that's not how God works. And when, so. and, and next time we get together, we're going to start talking about, because what good is all of this, knowing all this, if you don't know how to use it? So we're going to talk about the armor. We're going to actually talk about spiritual warfare. How to use this, when to use this, unless you're full of the Holy Spirit, you know, and the Holy Spirit tells you to do this, then don't, you know, don't advance. Don't tap, and we're going to get on with that. But it's important to understand that God walked the planet as a mortal man filled with the Holy Spirit like you and I can and led by the Spirit. Yes. Now, um, Jesus told his followers to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Uh, uh, Nate, Luke 24, 49. Okay? For the promise of the Father. Here's where you need to read a little bit in Hebrew or look at the Bible from a Hebraic perspective because what was the promise of the Father? We look back and we go, oh, it was the Holy Spirit. But you understand, Hebrew people... They don't believe in Jesus, and they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They believe in Yahweh, because that's all they believe. So, Jesus, all this was new to them. Okay, so when, but they understood what the phrase meant, "promise of the Father." Okay, what do you got? John nineteen thirty one. Says now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the body taken down. Okay, I, I got ahead of myself. Okay, Luke, uh, Luke 24. 49. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are in due and the power from on high. Okay, back up a little bit. Um, read, read, um, okay. Now, now, keep going. Now, Jesus Jesus says in Luke 49, say that again. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are imbued with power from on high. Keep reading. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. This is Jesus. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Okay, so now Jesus just left. I mean, you've been with Jesus... And he just took off. How would you feel? How would you feel? You'd be like, you'd be like, yeah. But look what they look what they did. What happened in fifty two? And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Wait a minute. That portion of scripture always kind of some stung me a little bit. Why in the world Jesus just left him? I'd be like, Jesus, where are you going? You know. But yet they went back to Jerusalem and they're happy. They're excited. Why? Because Jesus said what? The promise of the Father is coming. So when Jesus said, wait for the promise of the Father, oh, they knew what that meant. Something good's coming. They were excited. That's why they were excited after Jesus left. Because they're going to Jerusalem and waiting for something exciting. They don't know what it is. And that was the whole purpose of the feast of of the promise of the Father. So, the promise of the Father to us is Jesus was giving us a gift. Go to Jerusalem and wait for this gift. So, the, na the names and the titles of the Holy Spirit. Someone read that. Jump in your country. Someone read the... Uh, go ahead. Jump in here. Someone. Author of Scripture. Second yes. Peter 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And... Do I have to read all that? Nope. Okay, the Bible is literally God breath by the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Yes. The Holy Spirit literally told men what to write down. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
they wrote down, and that's what you have in your hands today, is the Word of God, breathed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comforter, Counselor, Advocate. Mm -hmm. All three names are from the Greek parakletos, Ooh. from which we put, we get paraklete. 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 Another name of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised to send the Spirit to comfort, console, and guide those who belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. Seal and deposit. The Holy Spirit is God's own seal on His people. No one can break the seal of God. He also is a down payment on our heavenly inheritance. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Just like last, last time we talked together about the brief, right? Mm -hmm. This is a seal. Mm -hmm. The seal that God actually put on get ahead of myself, but I'll put up here a seal that God put on mankind. That you belong to me and no one can what? Break it. Break no it. one can break it. You can't break it. Why? Salvation hasn't anything to do with you. Remember the blood covenant? The salvation doesn't have anything to do with you. It was God and himself and that was it. And God and Jesus and that was all you have to do is what? Accept. Accept. Thank you. This is this is some good stuff. I just yeah, anyway. Go ahead. Yeah. And dweller of believers. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit resides in the hearts of God's people, and that indwelling is the distinguishing characteristic of the of the regenerated person. Mm -hmm. He provides the intimate connection between God and his children. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Intercessor guide. The Spirit intercedes and prays for us. He interprets our groanings so that when we are oppressed and overwhelmed by trials in the care of life, He comes alongside to lend assistance as He sustains us before His throne of grace. That is so deep right there. Yes. You know, this isn't at all exhaustive. This is just highlights that I would, I just, is, is impressive to me. You know, can you think about that? When you and I get so frustrated in life and we're like, Lord, just, Oh, I don't, you know, and you're just at your wit's end. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what to do because yeah. He dwells inside you. He will take those words that you're stumbling over because you're half crying, and He will take those words and He will make them into a wonderful, sweet Savior before the throne of God and say, Father, this is your child. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. If you let that thing sink in, oh my word. Anyway, this is this first page is to help you understand that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a it. He's not a thing. He's actually a person. So, some go on. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, possesses traits, personality traits. He has a mind. He has knowledge. Yes. He has affection. He has mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. He has a will. Mm -hmm. He can be grieved. He can be insulted. He can be liked. Lied to. Mm -hmm. He can be resisted. Yes. Sounds like a person. You know? Yeah. He, these are all scriptures that, matter of fact, there's, there's more to this, but these are just, you know, some that we picked out there. The fact that, you know, you can grieve him. How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Not you, not you mean, when you reject him? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I'll tell you how you grieve the Holy Spirit. Very simple. When I was in Bible college and I was knocking doors, I actually went to a, a, a it was Jiffy store back in Florida. Jiffy store, you know, Jiffy store, little tramp, little, little champs, yeah, remember? remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a girl behind the counter, and I had a church track in my pocket, and the girl behind the counter, and Lord, forgive me, because I've done that. I've, I've asked him for forgiveness so many times, and she was cute. Mm -hmm. Really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and the Holy Spirit told me, told me, I had a track in my pocket, church track, you know, whatever, whatever. And he told me to give it to her. And you know what I did? Shut up. <laughs> Can you give it to her? Shut up. I'm going to use this. Shut up. I'm telling you. To my shame. Walked out the door. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit went, oh, really, dude? Seriously? <laughs> You're a Bible student? Are you serious? Oh, my gosh. I felt, I mean, I, yeah. That's how you grieve the Holy Spirit. When he tells you something, you say no. You know, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. He can be grieved, can be lied to, he can be resisted. 
And he is exactly what God put in our life to what? To be the comforter and the seal and the dweller and our intercessor. And we tell him, no. Or we belong to a church that says, he doesn't exist. Or he ain't all that. Or... Or they fear him. Yes. Yeah. Turning your page, turn to page number two. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Can I have an A, please? Yeah. Someone start reading. Holy Spirit, part of the Trinity. First John five seven. So there are three witnesses in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one and are distinguishable from each other. Thank you. Hold on a second. So the Bible says there are three in heaven who bear witness, and these three are one. Now, this is a very simple explanation. I know a lot of scholars who will poke holes in this thing. But this is the simplest way to understand that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, but dis each distinguishable between each other. What do I have in my hand? I have a whole A. Yes. I was told I can't drop it. <laughs> a whole, a whole egg. Okay? A whole egg that is made up of three individual parts. But a whole egg. We have a shell, a yolk, and a white. Three parts, individual parts, make up one whole egg. Now, out of the Godhead, what part became flesh and dwelt among us and we could see? Word. Jesus, the Word. That's right. <laughs> what part of the egg do you see? The shell. The shell. That the shell would therefore represent Jesus. Now, inside Jesus, Jesus said, "As you see me, you see the Father." Inside the shell is a yolk. Now, if we sat on this and incubated this, that yolk would turn into what? A chicken. That's right. Would would turn into a chicken, right? What part of the Trinity spoke the world into existence, gave life to, spoke man into existence? God did. That's right. The God did. Now, God spoke into the Holy Spirit, which hovered over the earth, and light became. Right? God gave life. Now, check this out. Inside this shell is a white, protecting, comforting, helping, the yoke. Surrounding the yoke. What part of the Holy Spirit does that? To us. I mean, what part of the... What part of the, what part of the, what part of the, the Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit would therefore be the white. And what's interesting is the white takes shape of the shell. Right? Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit takes shape of you. Wow. You know? So the easiest way to understand the Trinity is... Here's a whole egg. Three individual distinctive parts, but yet one whole egg. Mm -hmm. And they all serve different purposes. Wow. The, 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 the Godhead. One God. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. God, uh, Yahweh, is not the Holy Spirit. Yahweh is God. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God. One Godhead. Three distinctive parts. Mm -hmm. so. And I just want to throw something in. How many here, like, you can tell when you're talking to God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, you can distinguish the three parts? Because there's three parts. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, oh, my God, my Father, my Father's talking to me, or, oh, Jesus is talking to me right now, or mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should be able to distinguish the, the three parts. You can. So, I was going to, um, here's this, I'm just going to give you, like, two exercises you could do, like, in your own time. It's like, in your quiet time, but, like, when we're seeking after God, He shows Himself to us, right? And, mm -hmm. and God says He's not hiding from us. And He manifests, shows Himself to those who love Him. So, um, the first exercise would be in your quiet time, just close your eyes. And whatever you call God the Father, if it's Papa, Daddy, Abba, Father, and just say, Father, Father, Father. And wait. You'll fear him, feel Him, His presence, and hear Him. And then I would encourage you to write down what, what you what you heard, what you what you felt. The next you want to do with Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
and wait. And you will hear him and you will feel him. And the same thing with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And wait. And, and it's a triune God that we serve. And just like we read that he has a mind and a mouth, just like God, just like Jesus, he, he can be reading his emotions. They all have those. And so that's a good exercise in your own quiet time to, to be able to hear the different voices of our trying with God. And the, the next step to that would be if you have don't have one, I encourage you to get one like a prayer journal, a God journal, a dream mm -hmm. journal, whatever you want to call it, when God speaks to you. And just write down, you know, Papa, what do you think about me? Leave a space. Same thing, Jesus, what do you think about me? Leave a space. Holy Spirit, what do you think about me? Leave a space. And ask. And you will hear. Me? Tried it. <laughs> and he actually heard the three different parts and he was surprised because they had three different things to say to him. Prophetic, encouraging, speaking destiny into what he's called to do. And it took him a few days, but he did it. You know, and so our God, so I encourage you, press in because our God is amazing. And Holy Spirit speaks to us, Jesus speaks to us, Papa speaks to us. And so if you have never heard the different parts of our God, I encourage you to press in because it's like once you start hearing, perceiving, feeling them, it's like you don't want to stop. Because <laughs> you're all playing, he's inside you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He'll talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you know if it's God or you? Well, you don't until you exercise enough until you hear it. So, if you hear something, write it down in faith. Write it down in faith. And eventually, you know, it may be your thoughts, but eventually you, you'll get it. So. Just like when I shared with the testimony, I had never prophesied over somebody that God's going to open your womb. Yeah. I mean, that was like going out there for me. I'm thinking like, am I supposed to say this? No, I'm not supposed to say this. Am I supposed to say this? And that the Holy Spirit's like, no, I want you to say it. I'm like, okay, well... It took three years, well, not quite three years because she's been pregnant for eight months now, but, you know, <laughs> you know, God was faithful, and he had her seek me out to tell me, because that was confirmation mm -hmm. for me that, you know, that, yes, I did hear his voice, because I'm not always sure, but, you know, and so, but it's practice hearing the voice, God's voice, Jesus' voice, Holy Spirit's voice, and then doing, saying, going, what you're led to do, and then that's when all these Amazing God things happen. So, <laughs> God stories. So the Father's name is Yahweh, the Son's name is Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit's name is Ruach HaKodesh. So if someone reading the Holy Spirit possesses the same characteristics as God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit possesses the same characteristics as God and Jesus. He is omniscient, knows all things. He is omnipresent, mm -hmm. everywhere present. And he is eternal. Mm -hmm. He was involved in the creation of the world. Yes, he was. He was involved in the working of miracles. Yep. He was involved in the salvation of men. He is currently involved in the regeneration of man. That's right. Um, go, go for it. Romans 11. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead uh, yeah, dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life the immortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's right. So if the same Jesus that raised, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that dwells in you. This is who Jesus sent to you. So when they, this was the promise of the Father, that he is going to send a portion of the Godhead to live inside man. Right now we say, don't you want to get Jesus in your heart? When, you know, it's funny, talking about growing up in church, you know, so many pastors are like, you want to get washed in the blood? No. <laughs> you want to get Jesus in your heart? No. You don't want to go to heaven. You want to go to hell, do you? Well, no, I don't want to go to hell. You didn't get saved. You know, we use all these terminologies and stuff, but really, who's in your heart? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in your heart. Yeah, Jesus is in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is who's living in your heart today. So this is who he is. So someone read me. We put this in here because uh, I think it's just powerful. Sometimes we don't know what to pray, but here's just a really simple prayer. Someone uh, read the power prayer at the end. Thank you, God, that you are always with me. I long to know you better every day. So I ask for a fresh and ever-increasing flow of your spirit. I pray that you, Holy Spirit, will be at home in my heart. 
Keep me from allowing anything into it that would quench or grieve you. I don't ever want to hinder your work in my life. I invite you to move powerfully through me, for I know that your spirit in me is how you touch the world around me. Keep me ever mindful of that as I go throughout my day. I want to always be sensitive to your leading. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That's right. All right. So right now, Jesus came to earth to bring heaven to earth and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. So, now we will talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Because not, not only He dwells in you, but He also does, is going to do a work in you. In the Holy Spirit. So, anything, Trish? Um, I have stuff in here, but... Okay, alright. <laughs> Someone read the first one. As believers, we can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit at work, revealing, confirming, and illuminating the Word of God in the hearts of His believers. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit speaks. One, He speaks expressly. Mm -hmm. Two, He speaks and gives direction. Mm -hmm. Three, He speaks in dreams and visions. You know how many people, oh, so many churches today, beware of those churches that believe you can hear the voice of God. There are, there are churches today, I was part of one of them, that believe that you cannot hear the voice of God. But the same pastor would stand up the next Sunday and go, Some of you listen to the voice of the devil! Some of you are, you know, the enemy speaking to you! And you think to yourself, since when does the devil have a stronger voice than my God? Than my Father? You know, but um, the Bible tells us that he speaks expressly, he speaks clearly. If the problem is, is we have to tune out, we have to seek, we have to journal to hear his voice. But Jesus said, my sheep know me and know my voice, mm -hmm. you know. So he will speak to you clearly. And actually we wrote that into a sentence, those three things, Arcelia. Yeah. The Holy Spirit gives you clear direction through dreams and faith. Yes. The Holy Spirit will give you clear direction yeah. through dreams and visions. Now, let me help you out with something. A dream and a vision doesn't necessarily have to mean you're asleep. Right. I mean, because I have, I seriously, I have literally been, you know, you ever, have you ever done this before? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, oh, oh, just like, wow, where were you? I just got this down now. Yeah. Wow, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah. I all of a sudden I will be sitting there and all of a sudden I will just space out, you know, and you know, and he's like, wow, I just got this open vision. I, I, yeah. you know, I don't know, man, but I just got this download, and I, I need a piece of paper, you know, and I'll start writing stuff down, you know, that God tells me look at this up, or she'll get this all the time, you know, she'll get, you know, go to Jeremiah. Why Jeremiah? Just go to Jeremiah, <laughs> you know. And anyway, you want to jump in here? I just wanted to say um, that don't be scared of dreams and visions because it's totally like the Holy Spirit. And everything has to do with we're God's children. And when we ask God, if it's in the Bible, we have access to it because we're his kids. And he does speak to us in dreams and visions. So if you're, some people, like um, my sister's not like an avid dreamer. She's not. I dream all the time. But she, um, I just told her, I said, why don't you, do, when you go to sleep, just say, God, if you have anything to speak to me, I receive it. You know, just speak to me in my dreams. So she doesn't dream often, but when she does, it always has to do with something spiritual, something going on in her life. And so even if you don't dream all the time, because you have the Holy Spirit, you have access to God, to God's hearts, God's thoughts. And if there's something going on in your life that you're maybe not aware of or you need extra insight, God will speak to you in dreams and visions. If you ask, but it all has to do with your mouth. Just, you know, if your kids need a pair of shoes, mom can have a pair of shoes, or I need money to go to the mall. You just, if you're a child growing up, you just ask because that's your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way our daddy God is too. Just ask, and he will, he will give it to you and he'll speak to you that way. One of my prayers is I always ask the Lord for give me understanding of the scriptures. Give me unusual understanding of the scriptures. I want to, you know, I want to know. I just want to know, you know. So, and and it says in the Bible that Jesus would open up your mind and help you understand the scriptures. So, anyway, 
So we read, the Holy Spirit teaches. He teaches truth. One. Two, He teaches about everything. Mm -hmm. Three, He teaches from inside of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Holy Spirit that teaches you truth about everything from inside of you. That's right. That's right. He will teach you whatever you need to know if you ask and seek. The Holy Spirit guides. One, he, he, lives in, he lives in you. Two, He walks with you. And three, He leads you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit walks and leads from inside of you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit regenerates. He justifies you. He strengthens you. He purifies you. The Holy Spirit justifies, purifies, and strengthens your soul. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to His attributes and stuff. The Holy Spirit sanctifies. He chose us. He washes us. He sets us apart. The Holy Spirit chose us to be washed and set apart. From this world. Mm. That's right. And the prayer? The prayer power. Lord, I ask you for a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit in me. Enable me to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge so that I may be filled with all the fullness of you. I don't, I don't ever want to take lightly the fact that you have sent your spirit to dwell in me, to dwell in my, what is it? To dwell in my guide and help me to live the life you have for me. Teach me the deeper things you want me to know about your word. Help me to hear the leading of your spirit telling me the way to walk. In Jesus' name, I mean. I mean, I mean. that's right. So, not only is the Holy Spirit inside you as a gift of God, He promises to do a work in you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and we're going to hand this out in your daily declaration, declarations, that once I begin a good work in you, I'm going to perform it until the day we see Jesus face to face. Not yet. And guess who is doing that work? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's doing that work in you. He is there to speak to you. He's there to teach you. He's there to guide you. He's there to regenerate you and sanctify you. That's the Holy Spirit's job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Again, this isn't totally uh, exhaustive. This is just high points that we wanted to get you. Question? Okay. So now, by the way, that is Ruha Ha Kadosh, the Spirit of the Holy One. Not Kodesh, Kadosh, Spirit of the Holy One. Like that? No, I just, that's a different name on top of that last one. On page three. On page three. First one's Ruhaha Kodesh, Holy Spirit. Ruhaha Kodosh, the Spirit of the Holy One. So now we go to page number four to Ruhaha Kodesh Kashir Debir. Right? Gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. This is actually the Holy Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit of promise. And uh, we're going to talk about the gift of Holy Spirit. Just like, just like Yahweh, well, what, what is it? Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah, you know, the Holy Spirit has multiple names as well. But it's always Ruha. Okay, so, so, we're going to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He, he's working in your life as a believer. Right? He's also, he's also awesome as he brought gifts. Mm. He brought gifts to you. Um, um, yeah, what's, what's the last page right there? Uh, that's the seal. Okay. Um, yeah, the do the handout? We do, we do the handout now? I'll tell you what, let's go over this page and then we'll, and then we'll go that handout at the end. It's okay. Sorry. So, if one desires to benefit from the promise of the, of the Spirit and the outpouring of the Spirit, then one must give their life to Him completely. Yes. If, so, if you want to desire to benefit from the promise of the Holy Spirit given to you, and if you want to benefit from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon you, then you must give your life to Him. You must let go and let God work in your life. 
And who works in your life? The Holy Spirit. You must let go and let Him work. Let Him teach you. Let Him guide you. Let Him sanctify you. Let Him regenerate you. Let Just let go and let the Holy Spirit do His work in your life. Because He is a person. He is a gentleman. He is not going to take over unless you want Him to take over. So, yeah, isn't that what the Galatians says? Uh, that once we accept the man and then we control him? Isn't that 5.20? Yeah. So, someone read me, the Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. Mm -hmm. Jesus sent the promise of the Father. Which we look at. Two, Jesus baptizes believers with the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Three, Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's talk about something that's a little bit controversial. Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. There's only one part in the NIV that changed the wording. The Holy Spirit doesn't baptize. It's Jesus who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. But there is one verse in the NIV where they change the words where it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you go back to the original manuscripts, which you have to go back into the Greek, Jesus is the one who's doing the baptizing. Jesus is the one who gave you the gift. It's Jesus who gave. Now, on the day of Pentecost, they showed up like fire on top of their head, you know, in the book of Acts. That was the baptism that Jesus was giving on his disciples, mm -hmm. was the Holy Spirit. So, um, so many times you hear people, why don't you come up here and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? There is no baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes his believers in the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit brings gifts. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right now. I, like, I like people taking notes. The Holy Spirit brings gifts. When he gives, um, he gives his gifts to whom he wills. Mm -hmm. uh, two, he gives his gifts for the purpose of building the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Three, he gives the gifts to spread the gospel throughout the world. So, so Jesus gave you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, you know, he will give you a gift, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the gifts. He... He decides who gives you the gift. I don't. I, I do not have the gift of tongues. I don't have it. It's not been given to me yet. It's not my responsibility. The Holy Spirit decides. I have the gift of teaching. I have the gift of of. I, I the, the word of God is really easy to me. You know, I have other gifting. You know that other people have. We're going to talk about the gifts in your handout right here. But the Holy Spirit is who decides on who gives what. You know. Who gets this spirit? Who gets that spirit? They are his gifts, you know. So if if don't get frustrated if, if you if if you want a gift and there's nothing wrong with going after a gift, but don't get frustrated. It's the Holy Spirit who decides who gives you that that particular mm -hmm. gift. Sorry. And his gifts are the purpose of what building up the body of Christ. In fact, Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. We are the 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 feet. You know, and I say this jokingly, but the head can't tie a shoe. The head has to have hands to tie a shoe. You know, so we are his hands. In fact, there's portions of scripture that talks about, I think it's in here in Corinthians, that says, I can't say to the foot that you're not important. Because the hand and the foot and everything, and Paul was trying to tell, tell everybody that we all have different parts, but we're all so important to one another. You know, I may be the little toe. But I'm just as important as the hand, or the foot, or the knee. Um, so the purpose that the, that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts is so that we can do the work of the Lord in this world. Because remember, Jesus, when he left, he wanted us to do what? Carry on what he has already started through the power of the Spirit. You can jump in here. Oh. I was going to say something about the gifts. Because we, we all know people, like somebody's like really strong in a certain gift, you know. You know, Holy Spirit gave that to them. And like when, um, like when Sean Smith comes, you know, he has that the gift of prophecy, right? But we can all get prophetic words. We can all have that gift. It may not come like all the time, but we have access to it when the Holy Spirit wants to give it to us to encourage, to edify the body. The same thing like with um, tongues and like like interpretation of tongues. Like um, I pressed in and asked for the gift for two years. Once I believed that it was a gift, because what we had grown up in a denomination that wasn't 
considered a valid gift. Like, what, what was he wasn't valid. He wasn't valid either. He wasn't a person. But, you know, it took me two years of pressing in, and then God gave that to me. And it's only been twice in my life that I've ever actually heard an interpretation when somebody was speaking tongues. You know, it's only been twice. So it's not like that's my main gift that I have. I just hear that all the time. So, like, when you have the Holy Spirit, all the different gifts that he gives, sometimes you may use it once or twice in your life. It just depends what, how he wants to flow through you. But you have access to all of them. And he's always going to do it at the right time when you're willing so that and it's all for to propel the gospel or to edify the body of Christ. And so... If, I have a question. Uh -huh. So these gifts, um, once you get saved, mm -hmm. it, it's not certain gifts you get and then the other ones are not yours. Can you get yes, you can. those gifts at any moment you in your salvation? As you grow. As you grow. So it's not only when you're saved, but you can give them as gifts at any point in your mm -hmm. Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He can give you. So he he may give you gifts immediately, you know, and he does because he brings gifts, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more, a little bit deeper than that. But he also, as you grow and your faith is stronger, you know, like Trisha, you know, she was given the gift of of tongues. You know, with, once she got past that roadblock that was so ingrained in our in our hearts growing up, um, so once we got past that, then she then the gift of the gift of, um, of uh, tongues was given. You know, now I tell you one thing: there is no such thing as a gift of prayer. You know, and I've heard people that, oh man, your wife's got the gift of prayer. No. There's no such thing about the gift of prayer. You know the difference between my prayer life and her prayer life, or her prayer life someone? Trisha uses it all the time. Okay. Trisha's like Paul. She prays in the Holy Spirit as much as she can. You can drive down the road speaking in tongues. You know? So uh, the reason that that the reason why her prayers sound different than the average person is because she's constantly doing it. That's a good thing. <laughs> you know? She's always always practicing prayer. You know, not practicing, she's always praying. You know, and it's like anything. The more you do it, the better, the better you get at it or easier it is and more comfortable you get in it, you know, when you pray up. Yeah. The gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. Are those... We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. This is just an overview. We've got another handout. Okay, what's your question? All right. I was told that the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge is when you get a word for somebody else. Like a certain uh, knowledge, certain wisdom, but it's... Let's go, let's go over that with our handout in a minute. Let's finish the page. Okay. Because we're, we're going to go over each one of those here in a minute, right? Yeah. Okay. So, the Holy Spirit bears fruit. Okay? Okay. 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 The Holy Spirit, keep going. So we'll read that. Anyway, jump in there. Holy Spirit's virtues are inside believers. Holy Spirit's fruit is an expression of His goodness. Holy Spirit's grace produces full, full, fullness of life. Right. The Holy Spirit actually has virtues. What is virtues? Who He is lives inside you. In the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation, there is a menorah. Okay? And this menorah represents the virtues of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Revelation, there's sevenfold, uh, uh, sevenfold, uh, well, actually, sevenfold spirits okay. around the throne, right? Mm -hmm. And this sevenfold spirit is actually the Holy Spirit, his sevenfold natures that you'll find in the book of Isaiah. And his sevenfold nature is that of Spirit of the Lord. You'll get, you might want well get this wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord. His virtue, his characteristics, who he is, dwells in you. When he came into your life, he brought his very person into you. You know, it's interesting, and I'm getting ahead of myself, and I wish this particular gentleman was here tonight, but he's not here. Um, first time I met Steve Sheen. First time I met him. Man, nicest guy. Nicest guy Got to talk to him. There's just something about that man that 
I was drawn to, we were joking, and I had a great compliment. Someone actually today, I, you know how you go to church and you, you meet somebody, you talk to me, but you don't know the name? <laughs> you know, he's like, you know who you remind me of? I'm like, who? Steve Sheehan. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we're kind of like bookends. <laughs> you know? But you know what? The reason why Steve Sheehan is such a wonderful person is because you can see the virtues of the Holy Spirit in him. You know, you can see because the Holy Spirit's in his life, regenerating his life, and you know, and walking and speaking. And the reason why he is that kind of person because you can actually see the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in his life. At least I can. You know, and these are the virtues that are inside Steve Sheehan as well as because the Holy Spirit's living there. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 can you can someone will get saved and you'll see a difference in them. Yeah. Man. You see a difference in him? Yeah. Well, hello. The Holy Spirit's in his life now. And he brought virtues. You know? So, he and he bears fruit. Um, we're going to talk about that. So, someone read me the prayer, power prayer. Prayer power. Lord, help me to be filled with a sense of your love, joy, peace, and purpose every morning when I get up. Enable me to know with all certainty that you are with me and that I am not alone. Strengthen my faith to understand without a doubt that you, Holy Spirit, will guide me every step of my way. I submit to you everything I face today and ask you to help me successfully walk through it with strong faith that can move mountains. I believe nothing is impossible with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So, let's go over, Trish. Why don't, we, why don't you go over, before we go to the last page, which is the seal, go, let's go over the <laughs> gifts, the fruits, and the virtues of the Holy Spirit living in the life of a believer. Amazing. Yep, you got it? Go ahead. Okay. So the gift, fruits, and virtues of the Holy Spirit. Um, so he brings these things in your life. Go ahead. It's like Rebecca talked about the gift of wisdom and knowledge. So the gift of wisdom is the ability to make decisions and give guidance that is according to God's will. And knowledge is the ability to have an in-depth understanding of a spiritual itch, issue or situation. And it's in, I love Ephesians. That's what Sean Smith's got. Yeah. Yeah. But Ephesians talks about how it's the Holy Spirit who gives us wisdom and knowledge and revelation. So some of that can tie in with the because sometimes the gifts overlap. It can tie in with the prophetic. But even just being able to understand. Like, how many of you had the experience, like, before you got saved, you read the Bible, and kind of like, what? I don't mm -hmm. get this book. I, don't, I just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. You know? But it's like, once you have the Holy Spirit, He's the one who's teaching you and actually giving you that wisdom and that understanding. You're like, oh, wow. You know, and it speaks to you. It's because it's not your brain wisdom. It's the Holy Spirit giving you that wisdom and that knowledge and understanding of what you've read. So... Does that kind of answer what you were asking you going, about? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's more there. Yeah, I know, but I was just touching those two. Um, the gift of faith is being able to trust God and encourage others to trust God no matter the circumstances. And that's a huge one. And this little tiny one right here has got the big, a big gift of faith. <laughs> she does. If ever I'm discouraged or something, or it's like, she's like, got, you know, I've got a great big God this big, and she's a little tiny woman with like, this much faith. And it's like, I, That's a gift. That gift in her the Holy Spirit encourages me, helps me to keep going. I've saved all your texts, <laughs> and I've read them over and over. Uh, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all need encouragement here. Yes, we do. <laughs> you can send me a few. <laughs> <laughs> the gift of healing is the miraculous ability to use God's healing power to restore a person who is sick, injured, or suffering. The gift of miracles is being able to perform signs and wonders that give authenticity to God's word and the gospel message. So every time any of us in here pray for a friend, a family, a coworker who's sick, whether they get an instant heal, a miracle where they get healed right now, or it's a process, it wasn't us who did it. It was the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us that caused healing. Does it, yes. okay, does it have, well the healing that my cousin experienced was an inner healing, does that count? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Does that be physical? 
It doesn't have to be physical. So, okay. I mean, because many times when you do, we, when we talk about spiritual battle next week, not long, you know, um, there's soul wounds and there's, you know, you know, all those things, and you have, you'll have inner healing through and, those. And, I have to anyway. share with you something, because it goes with that. This is another one of those things, like Holy Spirit said, look at this chapter and look up what this means in the Hebrew. Because um, this is one that I claim over my family and myself and friends. Psalms 103, which mm -hmm. most, most of us know that, right? So praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all your diseases. So the Holy Spirit had me look up several of the words in Hebrew, with what I'm going to say right now, is this is what diseases is, which is um, tachalu, which is disease, pain, or grievous, from the root hala which is to suffer, to be sick, or disease, which is from the primitive root hala, which means to be or become weak, sick, diseased, to be grieved, to become sorry, to be tired, to make sick, to feel or become weak, to be wounded, to be rubbed or worn, love sick, incurable. So that has to do with like grief and pain in your heart. So when Jesus... But God is declaring that I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals all your diseases. Diseases, even weariness, or being lovesick, or heartbroken, or like the soul wound. That's all that Jesus came to heal. And with the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, that's who brings the healing to us. Yeah. Then the gift of prophecy is being able to proclaim a message from God. I have a question. Yes. The gift of prophecy is being able to proclaim a message from God. So it doesn't have to be something from the future. Does nope. that, does that, so it's something, so it's, so that's the one you're receiving a word or even a vision or a picture for a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's, because that's why I was confused because somebody was trying to teach me or tell me that the gift of wisdom and the, and the gift of knowledge is the one where, um, you know, the Lord would give you a word of wisdom or word of knowledge for somebody. But I was confused because in my heart I kind of knew it was the, the prophecy. The gift of prophecy is when you receive a word or a message. So I just want to make sure. Right. I want to make sure because... <laughs> Remember what we first started out with, our first paragraph? The Holy Spirit's very hard. Well, remember what we... Controversial? Yeah, controversial. controversial. Yeah, okay. that, whole, that whole thing there. No subject is more controversial than that of the Holy Spirit. Because people just either don't take time to understand, you know, or take time to read, or take time to dig deep enough to understand. I like this. Mm -hmm. And you did our other Bible studies where you have to read everything in context and know the, yeah. not just pick out one verse and run with it. Mm -hmm. You need to know what happened before, after, who the writer was, what was happening in the historical times, who the audience were speaking to, mm -hmm. all of that, not just mm -hmm. run with one sentence and form mm -hmm. a whole denomination or a theology on it. Mm -hmm. um, then the gift of discerning of spirits is the ability to determine whether or not a message, person, or event is truly from God. I have this one. I have this one. I have this one. I have this one. Yeah, I, have this one. Because, uh, yeah I, have, I just have this one. When we, when we would go visit churches before we ended up on... You know why we ended up on Thrive Church? Pastor, are you there? <laughs> I can tell you why we ended up on Thrive Church. Because out of all the churches that I visited... I was able to discern that, wow, this is a professional church, professionalist, professional church. Wow, no one will ever get saved in this church. Wow, no one, you know, so, and the reason why I end up in Thrive is because that's where God showed up. The Holy Spirit showed up, and I'm like, oh, okay, there's something right going on here. So, we continue to go, and continue to go, and I, and, and I understand, you know, churches will have their ups and downs or everything, but as long as the center is God, and the, and, and the Holy Spirit continues to show up, I'm thinking, this is this is why I am at Christ Church. Because I've been through all of the churches in town, you know, and I have been able to go, wow, I don't think Jesus could come to that church. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. It's okay. 
The Thank gift of know. tongues is the ability to speak any foreign language that you do not have knowledge of in order to communicate with someone who speaks that language. Now keep in mind, this was a gift that the, that the New Testament in Acts chapter 2 had, right? Where the gift of tongues, when they were able to speak and they went out preaching the good news of Jesus and people from other countries heard it in their language. Now, the, when you hear the, the unknown tongue or the heavenly language, you don't find that until the book of Acts, uh, the book of Corinthians, where God gives you a heavenly language. But the gift of tongues is for you to actually start speaking to someone and they're understanding everything you're talking about because they are talking in another language. Okay, wait, wait, one more time. Can you say that again? Okay, the gift of tongues, mm -hmm. right there, was in, in from the Holy Spirit was mm -hmm. was when He gave them in Acts chapter two when mm -hmm. when the, they actually were speaking in other languages mm -hmm. and immediately they went out prophesying, witnessing about Jesus mm -hmm. and the people in that area because it was Passover and so many people were coming from other countries to Passover. Um, they were able to hear the gospel that Jesus, you know, the gospel in their native tongue. Mm -hmm. So basically, Peter went out there and he started preaching, and and uh, um, you know, he started preaching the gospel, and people were hearing Cantonese or whatever, whatever the language was. The the heavenly language you will find in in in. In Corinthians, where God gives us a prayer language. Mm -hmm. um, was anybody there in second? Yeah, I was. Yeah, that was. Did you guys? What yeah. happened? That was uh, the heavenly language he was I, speaking I, from. But did, what, what did? Uh, what what did he was saying, from? like like what Pastor Hector was saying, like the scripture he started quoting, was what the what the Holy Spirit was leading. And it, like what I was saying in his language, that's what I was speaking through his heart in the whole in the what is affectionately known as the holy language, and that's what Pastor Hector was. Had, I was clearly, I could tell. See, I was, everyone that was there could see he was able to discern that because the Bible says like there cannot be a speaker of tongues if there's not an interpreter. It it has to be confirmed. Right. Otherwise, it's false. And that's oh. what the Bible makes that clear, and that's why. And Pastor Hector obviously has the gift of interpretation. So he, like that's why he clarified it with the congregation today. And that's yeah. the interpretation. I just I just want to clarify then there is a, a clearly difference from the book of Acts and then from First Corinthians yep. the the the, um, the gift of tongues and our heavenly language are completely two separate. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. Like one. But it just seems like we just roll off. Like, we just, like, say, oh, we pray in tongues. Right. Like, so, like... Well, that's the whole so I just, like, huh? yeah. Exactly. I feel like now that I know there's the distinction, now I feel, like, led to, like, well, I want to know more about this difference. So, yeah. so... He, like, I got... I know you got... Go ahead. Can I give an example real quick sure. that happened to me? Um, when I was living in Hawaii, like, there was this uh, Germ nice German, elderly German couple that I met in Hilo, Hawaii. And, like, I have German blood me, but, like, I only know a couple things of German that I learned from my aunt, and they were not very, not godly at all things to say, so. But I, I met this couple, and I just started communicating with them. I thought I was just talking in English, but I was, was with one of my friends, and I carried on this full conversation witnessing to them about Jesus. And I thought I was just talking English, I thought they were talking English, because that's what I was hearing, what they were saying to me, it sounded like English. But my friend said, when did you learn to be fluent in German? I was like... I wasn't. I was talking English. No, you weren't. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Because yeah. they kind of freaked me out there, at that moment. You know? I know pastors who have who moved in that, who have had that gifting so much that when they do altar calls, they will actually speak to this person, you know, and you can hear them, and you're like, man, they sound just like it's Cantonese. And then they'll pray for the next person who ha who's happened to be like Irish, and they'll start speaking in Irish. He yeah, flows yeah. in that gift. Yeah. Oh. I was going to say with the, the distinguishing, like Paul, when, when he tells us to put on the armor of God, he's at the, after the end of putting on all the pieces of armor and telling us who we're fighting against, he tells us to pray in the Spirit right. on all occasions 
for the saints and for himself. So when he's taught, because he's in prison and chains for mm -hmm. the gospel. But that tongues that he's talking about is talking about your heavenly language. So when once you put on your armor of God, you need to be in a constant state of prayer in the spirit for your brothers and sisters in Christ, for yourself, for the your pastors in your area, and those in ministry, or those suffering for the cause of Christ. And sometimes we don't know what to pray, but that's why he's saying he prays in the spirit. And, that's, mm -hmm. and he even says that he prays in the spirit more than you all. But that's not what he's boasting about. And he's not boasting about being taken away to the third heaven. That's not what he's doing. But when he's talking about that tongues, that's his heavenly language. That Paul did all these amazing things, but he was always in a constant state of prayer, like breathing to him. And that was his heavenly language. But God also did use him with the tongues so that people could understand their language too. Here, for the purpose of hearing the gospel yeah. to get saved. So, yeah. Where, where are we? Tongues. Okay. The gift of interpretation of tongues is the ability to translate the tongue speaking and communicate it back to others in your own language. The gift of... Like happened today, even. Mm -hmm. The gift of administration is being able to keep things organized and in accordance with God's principles. The gift of helps is always having the desire and ability to help others to do whatever it takes to get a task accomplished. Mm -hmm. So those are the gifts. <clears throat> I have a question. So, <laughs> the gift of ministration. So if I'm not really organized, that's okay, right? <laughs> I mean, if my bookshelf is not in order, <laughs> am I okay? You may not have the gift of ministration. <laughs> that explains why like the only way I can actually clean the house and get things but, set up straight is after I pray and ask God to do it through me <laughs> but I tell you what I, I've known you long enough that if there's a need you always jump in you have to get the help yeah. Yeah. why else would you be serving pizza on a street and praying right. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I have that one so. yes, okay. Praise praise God. God. thank you Lord I have <laughs> now when the Holy Spirit is in your life Brings you gifts and everything we talked about. He actually produces fruit in your life. Someone jump in there and I think. Love, active, goodwill, expressed toward God and man. Joy, gladness, delight, especially in response to God's grace. Peace, tranquility, harmony, both with God and our fellow man. Long-suffering, patience, forbearance self restraints in the face of provocation kindness sweetness of temper that puts others at ease goodness generosity that reaches beyond just giving what is one's due faithfulness the virtue of reliability gentleness a humble and kind demeanor that helps to calm another's anger self control the virtue of one who masters his desires and appetites that's right and these are the things that people from the outside look at us and see, do we have these fruits evident in our lives? And that's what marks us as belonging to Jesus, when we have these things coming out in our lives. Because what she just read, the fruits of the Spirit, that's the opposite of how the world reacts to everything. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that comes yeah. for me. I'm good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know so, I'm his. So the Holy Spirit who Jesus gave to you works in your life, helps what we have talk, talked about he, he, give, he brought gifts in your life he brought his fruit in, in your life he brought his virtues in, his, in your life and he seals us Ruha Yeshua Hashem Menu you say that Yeshua Meshi the spirit of Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua Heshem. Say that again. Meshechenu. Meshechenu. When Jesus gives us, when Jesus gives believers the Holy Spirit, I think this is just awesome. He seals or marks his followers as one of his own. Yes. A mean. A mean. A seal, a mark, a mark with a seal, as a meaning of identification. 
The mark denotes ownership and carries with it the protection of the owner. You know, I'm telling you, in the last days, they are, man, you, folks, you need to keep your eye on what's going on in the world. They are beginning to mark people today. They are beginning to do that technology today. It's just a matter of time. We're going to be out of here because they are beginning to mark people today. The technology is right there on the cuff. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You know, in the book of Revelation, people are going to have a mark. They're going to have a mark of ownership who are going to belong to that of Lucifer. And right now, the Holy God has given you a mark. He's given you the Holy Spirit. A mark of a seal that you belong to me. Go ahead, Trish. So we have been adopted into God's family in Romans 8.15. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit producing Sonship, in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father, and that just always just, I mean, it makes me want to cry, but in a happy cry, <laughs> because we belong to God. We've been adopted into His family. We're His. We're His children, whom He loves and adores and sings over and holds in the palm of his hand. His other hand is on our head. He's constantly speaking, encouraging things, good things over us. She's releasing every blessing in the heavenly realms over us. And to think that the God of the universe who created us would want us to be his. And then that's why I love, I wrote these in the Amplified Version. Because when you realize what an amazing daddy God we have, it's with bliss. And from the depths of our soul, we cry, Daddy, God, Papa. There's just this amazing love that he has for us, each one of his kids. And I'm just always, it's just, it's overwhelming that he would love us like that. He adopted us. We're <laughs> anointed in 2 Corinthians 1, 21. But it is God who confirms and makes us steadfast and establishes us in joint fellowship with you in Christ and has consecrated and anointed us in doing us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so, all the things that Jesus did, he raised the dead, he healed lepers, he caused blind eyes to grow, he caused missing body parts to appear. He did it under anointing, because remember he was pleurest, full of in every part of his soul with that power of the Holy Spirit. We have that same anointing inside of us to go out and walk and do the same exact things that Jesus did. There is Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, a part of himself, so that we can walk in that same anointing, that same power as Jesus did. And we're sealed in Ephesians 1.13. In him you also have heard the, the word of truth, the glad tidings, gospel of your salvation, and have believed and adhered to and relied on him. We're stamped with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1.22, he has also appropriated and acknowledged us as his by putting his seal upon us and giving us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as the security deposit and guarantee of the fulfillment of his promise. And that promise is that we're heirs to salvation, heirs to the kingdom of God in Romans 8, 17. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. And a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters right now are suffering all across this globe for sharing the name of Jesus. I believe suffering is going to be coming to the United States, maybe not to the extent it is in third world countries, but we're just 
We need to be full of the Holy Spirit now, every day, mm -hmm. and be prepared and not walk in fear, but walk in authority. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1.14, that spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance, the first fruits, the pledge, and foretaste, the down payment on our inheritance, in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. And our power prayer to Ruach HaKodesh is, Lord, I come before you, and thank you for the inheritance you have given me as a child of yours. Deepen my understanding of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Speak to me about the inheritance I have because of what Jesus has done. Thank you that I am a joint heir with Christ. Help me to understand all that you have given me and how to possess it in my life. Reveal things in your word that I have not seen before and teach me what you want me to see. I come before you now and ask you to speak in my heart about what you want me to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, we have a couple more things. We have a face scroll and your daily decorations. The purpose of this lesson is you 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 see that you have authority, but you have to know what your the power of your authority lies. The power of your authority lies in the person who is inside you. The one the part of the Trinity that lives inside you is where your power and your authority is going to lie. It's very important for you to know this. Let's understand this. This is, this is all that's inside of you. As a believer, that's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. We've got so much to kick the devil's butt with. <laughs> yeah. Got, and, um, so, I'll, just, I'll say, like, I've made face scrolls before I start handing out for myself to remind me that I've got power and authority. And it doesn't matter um, your age in Christ or um, your physiological age, if you're a child of God, you all have the same amount of authority. Um, I have two little testimonies to share that, that um, one was a young woman that I had led to the Lord a while ago. She was only two months saved. And um, I immediately started teaching her about her authority. And uh, she'd gone to a friend's house, and the older brother had been playing with the Ouija board. So there was like, you know, a demonic entity in the house because we're by ourselves are all freaked out. And this young woman, two months old in Jesus, a baby Christian, but she knew that she had authority of the kingdom of God in her. She says out loud with her mouth, I'm God's daughter, and you have to get out now in Jesus' name. And it left. And her friends were like, what did you do? You know, they're all like freaking out. But she was two months old, baby Christian, but... She has the same Holy Spirit that somebody who's been saved for 30 years has, yeah. mm -hmm. which means it's the same power and it's mm -hmm. the same authority. So all of us in here have the Holy Spirit. We have all of this inside of us, just like Jesus did. So to me, this is like this is exciting. It's like when Jesus walked in the fullness of the Spirit. This is what was the fullness inside of Jesus. You know, in the spirit and, and the fullness of the spirit. And what's important is we need to when we start talking about spiritual warfare, um, you you got to make sure you're led by this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're led by you're led by the Holy Spirit when you decide to use your authority. So, your daily declara declarations is little portions of Scripture that you can start memorizing, start reading. You know, when you start to take your authority, these are things that you can use to use in your armor. For instance, like, um, is, well, when, you, when you're looking at your daily, daily violence or your daily decorations, are you anybody looking at them? <laughs> Y'all put them away. <laughs> you, know, you, know, your daily, you know, I am the handy work of God. No, devil, get away from me. Stay away from my son. Stay away from my family. You know what? I am the handiwork of God. You have no place here. You know? I, you, you, you can tell the devil that I have access to God. I have access to God. 
you know, I know you're trying to do whatever you want to do in my life, but I have direct ass access to God. You know, so there's different declarations on here. Like, does anyone speak out to you that Jesus, you know, I'm a new creation, or anyway. okay. I have access to God. Now. I have access to God. My all my sins were taken away. If you don't know what scriptures to use to take your authority, here's some. You know, that's the purpose of the day of the decorations is for because we shared this last week. You know, if you don't have anything hidden in your heart to use, you have nothing to fight with. You know, and when the Holy Spirit who's inside of you, working in you, trying to get to use something on your defense, on your daily walk, and if there's nothing in you he can find, you know, you might not have victory that day at that moment or that time because you've hidden nothing in your heart that the Holy Spirit can use. Mm. And we're going to talk about that when we talk about spiritual warfare. Because it's great to know all of this it's, and you've got to know where your authority comes from but now how do I use it? When do I use it? Where am I allowed to use it? If some people use their spiritual authority again, incorrectly. Again, when Jesus decided to fight Lucifer, when Jesus decided to take on Lucifer, right, in the wilderness, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to do this battle. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what did Jesus use to fight him? The Word. The Word of God. He didn't quote all of Deuteronomy, but just enough that made Lucifer back away. And you know what's the funny thing about Lucifer said? Each time with Jesus, hey, if you really think you're the Son of God, is what he said. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. if you really think you're the Son of God, and that's what he does right now. Lucifer still has access to heaven. He's lost his position, his authority, still has access to heaven. He still goes to the throne of God and says, ha! You really think you're a child of God? <laughs> you know, and he will do the exact same thing he did to Jesus, the exact same thing he did to to." To Adam and Eve, the same weapons he used to them is what he uses today. And he sits there in the back, he, acu he accuses you to God. Jesus stands there as our advocate between, between God and the, No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. He knows who he is in, in me. So, you know. In, questions, thoughts? We got lots of food. Oh, come on. much to this, but... Um, well, I'm just going to say that... Um, well, we're coming to this. We're at the end, so we're going to, like, pray, you know? So we do. But, um, I just feel really led that... Um, because the Bible says to ask and will be given to you, see if you will find, knock and will be given to you. And whatever we ask, God will give us. And so I just feel led like if there's if if you have like there's gifts that you're seeking or want or you just want more of the Holy Spirit for just like for just to have a time of just like anointing and just praying for each other. I mean that's what um, that's what's just in my spirit to do. So, huh? I was gonna say. You love that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to say. He okay. might get a, a good time, you know. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah. Like one good example, like in my life. Is that still Rebecca? recording? Yeah, it's still recording. Oh. Oh. Do you want me to stop it from yeah. recording? Yeah, you All right. <laughs>